Hello, in the fifth lecture, we will learn about more ways of uh, force commutation. Now, class B commutators or resonant pulse commutation. There are two circuits for resonant pulse commutation. First circuit is this. Here we have an SCR. We have an inductor, inductive and capacitive circuit connected parallel to the SCR and we have a resistive load. This load is not necessarily resistive. It can be a combination of inductor, resistor or anything else. Now what happens is when this SCR is off, when IG is equal to zero, we still haven't turned off on the SCR. What happens? Current flows in this direction. When current flows in this direction, it charges the capacitor positive on the top side and negative on the bottom side. And the when the capacitor is fully charged, this becomes open circuited. And when this becomes open circuited, no current uh, flows any longer. So current fl flow is stopped and no current flows through the load. Then what happens if we provide a gate current through here, this SCR turns on. So when the SCR turns on, current flow in this direction, current flows through the SCR and through the load back to the voltage source, current flows in this direction. And since this SCR is on and this capacitor is positively charged, what it wants to do? It wants to get discharged. So what it tries to do? It tries to get discharged in this path. So it firstly charges the inductor, then inductor passes the current through the SCR and it gets charged in the opposite direction. Plus in at the bottom and minus at the top. All these things are happening when these things is this SCR is still on. Now what happens when when the inductor is fully discharged into the capacitor and the capacitor is fully charged in the opposite direction, the capacitor, capacitor again needs to discharge. Capacitor again needs to discharge but now current will flow in from this direction. Now current cannot go in this direction because no current can flow from cathode to anode in SCR. So current cannot flow in this direction. As a result, in order for this capacitor to be discharged, the current will have to flow through this direction. Now we note that, we know we can see that IL will become ISCR plus IC. IC is the current through the capacitor, ISCR is current through the SCR. So IL will be equal to ISCR plus IC. Now, we see, uh, what we have learned from self-commutation is that this IC will be oscillating with gradually decreasing magnitude. So at, po at one point of time, this IC might be equal to or greater than IL. We will design it in such a way that one at one point of time, this IC is greater than or equal to IL. If that happens, Entire IL, which is uh, the load current is constant, entire, entire value of IL is provided by the IC. As a result, ISCR, current through the SCR, gradually turns to zero and the SCR switches off. That is, the current that the load needs is completely provided by this branch. As a result, no current flows through this branch and this SCR turns off. So this is called resonant pulse commutation. And, they, uh, and this is how we can turn off the SCR. There is another method of resonant pulse commutation uh, which uses an alternating uh, an alternating SCR. That is, we are considering this as the primary SCR TP and this as the auxiliary SC, SCR TA. Now, when both the primary and auxiliary SCR are off, current flows in this direction, it goes here then it cannot go in go through the SCR since the SCR is off. So it goes through the capacitor and inductor and diode and then through the load. And from the load it comes back to the battery again. As a result the capacitor gets charged in this direction and once the capacitor is fully charged the capacitor opens and no current flows through this, this circuit. Then if we switch on the primary uh, switch on the primary SCR what happens? current starts flowing in this direction that is current starts flowing from battery to from battery to the SCR to load and back to the battery so the load is supplied by the SCR and the battery so there is no problem current keeps flowing 
this charge capacitor it wants to get discharged but as we can see it cannot get discharged in this in this direction because if, if it get discharged in this direction the diode stops it from uh, stops the current from flowing through it so as a result the circuit or loop of the current will never be complete, uh, completed again it cannot get discharged in this direction because this scr is already off as a result the entire load is supplied by our primary scr next what we do if we switch on the secondary scr that is we provide a gate current to ta what happens this scr turns on when this scr turns on the capacitor discharges in this direction firstly the capacitor charges the inductor and when the inductor is completely charged the inductor in turn charges the capacitor then the polarity of the capacitor changes that is plus in this side and minus in this side and when the capacitor is fully charged no current flows through ta and this scr turns off when this scr turns off we can see that there is plus in this end of capacitor and minus in this end of capacitor and this is a charged capacitor and the charged capacitor wants to get discharged which path can it take to get discharged it cannot take this path since it cannot go through the opposite direction of scr from cathode to anode so as a result the only path available for this capacitor to get, get discharged is this path it can get discharged through battery and charged here so the complete loop of current can only be followed if it get discharged in the direction of the load again here the current through itp plus the current through capacitor is equal to load current so again since we find a combination of capacitor and inductor we will have an oscillatory and gradually decreasing current and we design design it in such a way that one point of time ic will be greater than equal to il at one point of time and at that point of time since ic is greater than equal to il the entire load will be supplied by ic and as a result itp will will be equal to zero and this scr will switch off so in this combination the auxiliary scr uh, turning on the auxiliary scr aids to switch off the primary scr the auxiliary scr switches off automatically and the primary scr switches off because there is no current flowing through it at one point of time now class c commutator is called complementary commutator we find again there are two scrs scr1 and scr2 we can note that uh, there are two this is our load resistance and this is another resistance we can note that when the both scrs are on no current flows through it and the circuit is just standing still now we are injecting some current into the scr1 into the gate of the scr1 which turns the scr1 off on what happens if the scr1 is turned on two things happen firstly a current flows in this direction secondly a current flows in this direction and true uh, first uh, what it does the second direction of the current it charges the capacitor in the following way plus in the right side and minus in the negative side when the capacitor is fully charged it is open circuited and as a result no current flows in this direction anymore and only the current flows through the rl only uh, the whole current flows to rl and through scr1 now we want to turn the scr1 off what we what can we do to turn the scr off we inject a gate current through scr2 then what happens the scr2 turns on if scr2 turns on this is a short circuit now it is to be noted that this point of this point or the anode of scr is connected to the negative end of the capacitor the cathode of scr is connected to the positive end of the capacitor through the scr so if scr2 is on there is a reverse bias applied across this scr and this reverse reverse bias will turn this scr scr1 off so what will happen a current will flow current will flow in this direction from voltage source vdc to rl to capacitor to scr to voltage source back again from voltage source to r to scr and back to vdc and in this process 
what will happen what happens is this capacitor is charged positive in this direction and negative in the right direction when this happens again we can inject some gate current through scr1 what it will do it will just create a short circuit here and this short circuit will, circuit will cause this scr to be reverse biased and since when this scr is reverse biased this scr will turn off as a result in this circuit turning on one scr turns off the opposite scr so that's why it's called complementary commutation commutation of the one scr depends on the second scr next mode of uh, commutation is impulse commutation so what happens in impulse commutation at first we can see the that if the if the scr is uh, at first if the scr both the scrs are off no current flows through the circuit because in this direction there is a reverse diode current cannot flow in this direction this thyristor is off current cannot flow in and in this direction too current cannot flow now suppose we are turning the scr t1 on what happens current flows in this direction this direction and back to the battery no current flows through the capacitor still because this scr is off and this diode is in the uh, is in reverse bias diode is in reverse bias thyristor is off so no current flows through the capacitor now if we turn the scr t2 on what happens is current finds another path a current flows in this direction a current flows through the capacitor in this direction what it does is it charges the capacitor at the top positive at the top and negative at the bottom and when the capacitor is fully charged this part of the circuit is open circuited and no current flows through it anymore the current only flows in this direction through thyristor 1 and back to battery now this this capacitor is fully charged and no current flows through this direction that means the thyristor automatically switches off since no current flows through it now this capacitor is fully charged and this capacitor wants to get discharged how can it get discharged this thyristor is on so this capacitor can discharge in this direction the capacitor can discharge in this direction and what it does by discharging it first charges this inductor and this inductor again then charges the capacitor with positive uh, at bottom and the negative polarity at top positive polarity is found at bottom and negative polarity is found at top and when the, this is completely discharged this capacitor is very much charged after complete discharge of the inductor now again we can see that the thyristor is still kept on thyristor, uh, thyristor t1 is still kept on thyristor t1 is not off now if we somehow switch on t2 what happens is this becomes short circuited if this becomes short circuited this positive charge comes here this negative charge or the negative polarity comes here so it it kind of creates a reverse bias in thyristor 1 so when the thyristor 1 is reverse biased it can no longer carry any current and it eventually shuts off turns off uh, so from where does the current flow now the current flows in this direction through the thyristor 2 to the load so as a result we can see whenever we provide a gate current through thyristor 2 we in turn switch the thyristor 1 this is called impulse commutation the last method of commutation or the easiest method is external pulse commutation in external pulse commutation what we do is there is a transformer this transformer has a high winding ratio so if we provide a very small voltage here we get a very la large voltage here so we provide a pulse here what that pulse does is it creates a high voltage here and as a result if if a very high voltage is present here and the voltage across the scr is comparatively low what it does is it if this high voltage is greater than this uh, battery voltage of the battery what it does is it makes this scr reverse bias because here is high voltage and the battery is at a lower voltage so it becomes reverse bias when this is reverse bias the scr stops working one problem is there in the circuit that very high voltage is provided here and the circuit elements may get ruined if the voltage is so high to solve this problem a very powerful capacitor is connected in parallel to the scr and the transformer 
the, what this capacitor is does uh, does is this capacitor stops the voltage in the original circuit that is voltage through the uh, through the load to rise uh, very high since it stops the voltage from rising very high the load is protected and the circuit is not spoiled we have learned all we have to learn about scr we will uh, we'll have a slight discussion on triac and gto we know scr all, uh, only works in positive cy cycle but triac works in negative cycle as well what it does is here if we provide gate pulses here and here what happens is here till this point till this point the voltage is zero and after this point the voltage follows the input just like a regular scr and in the negative side too voltage is zero but in the negative side when we have applied a gate voltage we get a, a voltage in the negative direction that is in case of scr it, this would have been zero no current flow no current or no voltage in negative direction would have flown but in case of triac current flows uh, current flows in negative direction and there is a voltage in negative direction so this is the difference between a basic triac and an hcr when we need the negative half cycle we will be using triac and there is another thing called gate turn off transistor what it does is let us consider a simple sine wave so gate turn off transistor is basically like scr that is if we provide a pulse here the output voltage from here will be zero output voltage in the negative side will be zero that is its gate pulse does not affect the output voltage what it does is if we provide a pulse here before we provide the pulse the output voltage is zero after we provide the pulse output voltage is mapped to the input voltage and it follows the input voltage now if we provi provide a negative pulse here negative pulse actually turns off the transistor negative pulse turns off the transistor and after the negative pulse output voltage is zero so in case of scr the positive pulse would have turned on the uh, switched on the scr but negative pulse wouldn't have switched it off in case of gto the negative pulse switches off the transistor so difference between triac gto and transistor uh, and an scr is scr works in only the positive half gto also works in the positive half but it can be turned off by applying a gate signal and the triac works in both the positive and negative half that's the basic difference between the three that's all for the semiconductor switches next we'll learn about the uh, about converter circuits thank you so much